So this is another um, exercise to just help start to create some awareness around how to press overhead, um, particularly for this population that has identified as like a serratus anterior weakness. Um, maybe you've had like a long thoracic nerve injury and you're looking to get some hypertrophy and rehab how to use that muscle again. Or maybe you've just had like a shoulder impingement or like a rotator cuff injury where your shoulder blade mechanics have altered a little bit. This is a really nice exercise because it creates a situation where the weight dictates whether or not you can do the movement. And if you can't do the movement, then pretty much the serratus won't be kicking in. And what the weight helps us get is uh, this proprioceptive feedback. And by that, I mean the muscle spindles. So these little fibers within the muscle. And when your muscle stretches, you get a sensation of that stretch and that creates an awareness of where I am in space. So if I put my arm backwards, part of that awareness of me knowing my arm is backwards is because the muscles on the front of my shoulder are on stretch. Same goes for if I come up this way I'm feeling more of that positional awareness by a lot of these extensors that are on stretch. So to initiate the movement, we actually wanna create a pre-stretch for the serratus because that's more of an upward rotator. It's short when I'm up here. As I come down, it downwardly rotates. So you're starting by initiating with a backwards movement into a press. I like to set up the movement in a bit of like a gate situation. And what that does is it just biases this sort of anterior oblique sling through your serratus, your obliques, down into your groin, even into sort of these muscles on the front of your shin. It also helps you use the back leg to be involved in the pressing movement. So I'm pushing through my back foot, which goes up through my calf into my quads and glutes, and then kicks into my lat on the other side. And it just all helps create this sort of environment where pressing becomes achievable. So got a little bit of weight here, five kilos. And as I press, I'm starting with the weight about here to get the road or that stretch we were talking about. I'm going to do a little bit of rotation. So I'll show you from the front and the back. So if I'm here, I'm going to rotate my chest a little bit to the right. That stretches my obliques. It makes me put a little more weight through my calf. So I'm getting a stretch on that back foot too. And then I push forward and come back. And the reason we call this a torch press is, I guess it came from maybe like Statue of Liberty when you're holding that weight up like this. Um, but the difference between a traditional overhead press and this is that I'm pushing the weight in front of me. So from the side, I'm pushing the weight out there. And we're not there long enough that, you know, you're getting like a massive amount of weight going through this sort of front of the shoulder that might be a little bit vulnerable after some shoulder injuries. And that might create like a familiar, not even a compensation, but a barrier to the movement. And what that barrier might look like is the shoulder blade trying to elevate to achieve the movement. You see that a lot with people getting into these positions and they do this, or they try to come up and they just, they can't, so they lift the shoulder blade up. So I can't actually get my hand any further overhead until my shoulder blade comes down and then I can get overhead. So with the weight, I cross pattern, so left arm's going behind. I'm trying to bring some breath into it, so maybe I can get a few reps out of one breath out, so I breathe in, and then. And I'm feeling fatigue in my triceps and in my serratus in here. So we're more interested in initiating this movement with a stretch and then a press, as opposed to just being here in sort of an almost finished position and then trying to create. That's a very different movement to back and forward. And you'll feel a difference if you try that with the weight. You'll find that with that back movement, pushing the weight forward becomes a lot more achievable. You could use this to retrain some scap mechanics. Maybe you notice that there's like a medial winging of the border of the scap. This will help clean some of that up. Or maybe you just notice that there's some atrophy from an injury, like I said, that long thoracic nerve injury. And this serratus here is smaller or less in size than this side. It's also a great way to clear a little bit of impingement in some populations. That serratus being able to hug that shoulder blade to your rib cage 
then creates a little bit of freedom underneath that acromion, gives you a little more space in here. Those structures are gonna be pushing and rubbing on each other anyway, that's a normal pattern, but some of those structures under there might be a little bit sensitized from your previous injury. So this helps kind of share the load and spread it away from just the front of the shoulder, me trying to get my arm up. It enables one of your biggest upper limb muscles to be a part of that movement. Sets of three of 10 to 12 reps. We kind of want to see some fatigue. So you get some of that hypertrophy response. Um, start off with a conservative weight like that's five kilos and build up over time. And then you only add a little bit. If you go from a five to a six kilo, that's quite a big jump in terms of percentage. So you might start off with five and maybe in a couple weeks time, then you do like the first set with six kilo and then the next two sets with maybe five kilo and progress that way. So give it a go. Let me know how you go. If you find that this is challenging, maybe you start with the landmine press, which is a different exercise that we have. You can check that video out. Um, if you've got any questions, ask away.